Um, our next presenter will be Cody Bongiorno, and his project is titled Interactive 3D Resources to Improve Parent Understanding of Obstructive Sleep Apnea in Children with Down Syndrome. So go ahead, Cody. Thank you, Chelsea. All right. My name is Cody Bongiorno, and my capstone project investigates the use of interactive 3D resources to improve parent understanding of obstructive sleep apnea in children with Down syndrome. I'd like to begin with a few words of acknowledgement. Thank you to the Children's Hospital of Colorado, the Modern Human Anatomy Program, and the InWorks Innovation Initiative for supporting my project. I also offer my appreciation for the support and guidance provided by the members of my capstone committee. To provide you with some context on the focus of my research, obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, is the most common sleep-related breathing disorder and is diagnosed by a sleep study known as polysomnography or PSG. Obstructive sleep apnea is highly prevalent and typically more severe in children with Down syndrome. Meta-analysis from 2018 revealed an incidence of 69 to 76% and half of these children had moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea. Anatomic abnormalities present in children with Down syndrome cause an airway obstruction that predisposes them for obstructive sleep apnea. These abnormalities include an enlarged tongue, enlarged tonsils, shortened midface, narrowing in the nasopharynx, trachea, and subglottic regions, as well as abnormal growth patterns at the level of the alveoli. So these children have risk factors for OSA from the nose all the way to the most terminal and smallest parts of their airway. Obstructive sleep apnea also exacerbates pre-existing medical conditions present in children with Down syndrome, including congenital heart disease, pulmonary hypertension, and neurocognitive dysfunction. Given the prevalence and the severe associated comorbidities with obstructive sleep apnea, I was curious how well is OSA understood by parents of children with Down syndrome? Recent research indicates that these parents struggle accurately perceiving the quality of their child's sleep. Up to 50% of children with Down syndrome and no sleep-related symptoms per their parents' report actually had an abnormal PSG sleep study. This prompts the question, how are these parents taught about obstructive sleep apnea at the time of their child's diagnosis? And the current education for these parents is primarily discussion-based. I saw this as an opportunity for improvement and felt that it was a worthy endeavor considering a heightened understanding of obstructive sleep apnea by parents could lead to more effective management and optimize long-term outcomes for these kids. The objectives for this project were first to create interactive three-dimensional learning resources for parents of children with Down syndrome and newly diagnosed obstructive sleep apnea. And second, to implement these three-dimensional resources in the clinic and assess the premise that parents will establish an improved understanding of obstructive sleep apnea compared to the traditional discussion-based education. This study was deemed exempt by the Colorado Institutional Review Board. Using the open source program 3D Slicer, I mainly segmented the upper airways of a pediatric patient with Down syndrome and a pediatric patient without Down syndrome. I then exported these segmentations as 3D models to demonstrate the anatomic differences between the cases. I subsequently collaborated with InWorks to generate and print physical 3D models of both the Down syndrome airway and typical pediatric airway. These models are a more tangible way of demonstrating the dysmorphic and characteristic anatomy in children with Down syndrome that contributes to obstructive sleep apnea. I then produced 3D models of the head and neck for both cases to associate them with the airways and highlight the relationship of each airway to the surrounding anatomy. I uploaded these models into the open source program Blender to produce an animated video that complements the printed physical 3D models for the parents of newly diagnosed children. The future directions of this project beyond 3D model and video development were impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic and data collection was not feasible. However, implementation in the clinic will be pursued when possible within the next year. This will begin with a pre-educational survey to assess the baseline knowledge of parents have of obstructive sleep apnea. And this will be provided to patients while they are checked in the waiting room at the clinic. 
Parents will then participate in a physician-led educational session at the clinic to which they will be randomized to either an intervention group that will receive the 3D resource education or a control group that will receive the discussion-based education. Immediately following this session, we will provide a post-educational survey to evaluate the efficacy of our three-dimensional learning resources compared to the control group education. The third and final phase of this project will be data analysis. And as a pilot study, we are primarily interested in determining if there is actually a improvement in parent understanding of obstructive sleep apnea with our novel resources. We will plan to do a dependent t-test of the Likert scale questions in our survey, and we will allow for descriptive statistics to verify and guide us through this process. We will then do a qualitative comparison of the open-ended questions on our surveys to gather the parent perceptions of our 3D resources. In summary, a need to improve clinical education uh, was identified for parents of children with that Down syndrome and newly diagnosed obstructive sleep apnea. I then created novel 3D learning resources that will be assessed in the future. Our long-term impact for this study is to influence the future standard of clinical care with the knowledge gained and to hopefully contribute to more effective management of obstructive sleep apnea and better outcomes. The immediate impact would be to establish a comfort and understanding OSA for parents and to ideally ease their anxiety that they may have surrounding the diagnosis. And finally, these three-dimensional resources could be useful for telehealth education. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. Um, so there is one question. What visual resources, if there are any, are currently used in the uh, parent-patient consultation to inform them about sleep apnea? Yeah, so that's a great question. The current resources visually are uh, schematic drawings, um, kind of your typical uh, anatomic illustrations that you'd find in a uh, physician's office, but there are no uh, three-dimensional resources or um, other modalities for these parents, to our knowledge. When I, I, let's see, sir. Yeah. Other really uh, complimentary comments for you, Cody. So 